Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones is arguably the greatest golfer ever. His accomplishments are legendary, but those titles and achievements might never have taken place if not for the relationship with a quiet little Scot named Stuart Maiden. It's almost destiny that brought those two men together. Stuart Maiden came to the athletic club when my grandfather was right around six years old, and when he came to this club, he brought with him this very upright, syrupy kind of Carnoustie swing that my grandfather learned from him almost by imitation. When he turned six, Stuart Maiden became the golf professional, and Joan said the luckiest day of my life was the day Stuart Maiden walked into Eastlake. In the film Bobby Jones' Stroke of Genius, Maiden's early instruction of a young Jones is portrayed. Golf historian Catherine Lewis says Maiden was Jones's only golf instructor, although he never gave Jones a formal lesson. We Bobby, hit hell out of it. He would come to East Lake as a young boy with a cutoff golf club and he would follow Maiden around the course and other players around the course and watch very intently that great Carnoustie swing that was so important uh, in the 20th century and he would come home and with his friends Perry Adair and Watts Gunn and you know others uh, and would practice and practice and practice. Maiden was born in Scotland in the late 1800s. He followed his brother Jimmy to the U.S. at a time when a number of Scottish professionals were bringing their Carnoustie brand of golf to America. He eventually became a golf professional at the Atlanta Athletic Club at Eastlake. It was at Eastlake that he worked with students like Jones and Hall of Fame members Alexa Sterling and Perry Adair. Maiden's teaching style was different, but effective. One time, Jones was having trouble spraying shots. And Stewart was in the pro shop planing a shaft. And so he walked out to the practice tee while Bub was out there hitting balls. And he took one look at, um, at, at Bub's swing, and he took that shaft and smacked Bub very hard on the left ankle, so hard that Bub jumped to his right. And Bub looked at him and said, well, what do I do now, Stuart? And Stuart just looked at him and said, knock hell out of it. And Bub just took a very free swing, just hit it on a rope, and when he turned around, Stuart was already on his way back into the pro shop. Maiden also offered a little advice to club members, like when furniture businessman J.J. Haverty wanted Maiden's help. And when Stuart came out to the practice tee and watched Haverty take two swings, all he could say was, my God, man, do you have to play golf? And when Haverty said, well, Stuart, but what can I really do? And, and Stuart said, I suggest you take a two-week break and give the game up altogether, and walked in. Bob Jones says his father, Bob Jones III, experienced Maiden's unique instruction techniques. The story goes that Bobby Jones wanted to discourage his son, Bob Jones III, from playing golf. Bob felt that to be Bob Jones III would put a tremendous amount of pressure on my dad, and so he really wanted to discourage dad from playing the game. And Bob arranged for dad to have a lesson from Stuart Maiden. Stuart had dad start hitting five irons at eight o'clock in the morning. Finally, at about noon, my father put the club down, started walking back into the clubhouse. And Stuart said, lad, where are you going? And my father said, well, I'm, 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 I'm going to get lunch. And Stuart just looked at him and said, I don't take lunch. Get back here and keep hitting. 2.30 in the afternoon, my father's hands are bleeding. So again, he puts down the club, starts walking in, and Stuart says, where are you going? And he said, well, Stuart, my hands are bleeding. He said, stick them in the bucket. And that's when my father discovered that the bucket was a bucket of brine. And at his peak, my father had a plus two handicap. And he always, to his dying day, said that a lot of that was from what he learned from Stuart Maiden that day. After his time at Eastlake, Maiden opened a golf studio in New York City and gave lessons for $20 per hour, which was unheard of in those days. Toward the end of his life, Maiden, at the request of Jones, moved back to Atlanta, where Jones helped him land a position at Peachtree Golf Club. Unfortunately, Maiden suffered a stroke and passed away in 1948. Today, if you walk through the Eastlake Clubhouse, the club's history, in fact, golf's history, is on beautiful display. 
There are the trophies of Bobby Jones and rooms dedicated to players like Charlie Yates. And upstairs, near the men's locker room, is a glass display case honoring Stuart Maiden. Club manager Chad Parker says he and his staff take great pride in upholding the traditions associated with the club, and they always enjoy hearing visitors talk. And you hear people whispering about, look at this picture, look at that trophy, um, and they have a sense of it. And if, you, you, if you're not impacted by that as a person, then, you know, at least in, in my business, that's, something's wrong. Now, some of those visitors might have a conversation about a Scot nicknamed Kilty the Kingmaker who has a special place in the history of golf.